And we are live! Hello, everybody! <laughs> Welcome to the final stream of today for Play May. I hope you enjoyed our one shots to round us off. We are going to be talking about how you, yes, you, can make amazing encounters. And we're going to show you how to build them. But first, before we get ahead of ourselves, George Sanders, my. My good friend, how are you doing? <laughs> good, good. It's been a great day here, and uh, I got to catch a couple of the uh, streams earlier in Katoy Poi's game, and uh, the, uh, the the amazing, they saved the crocodile. So. I know! <laughs> Uh, fart jokes abound, body humor all over the place. It was it was near and dear to my heart, and I loved every moment of it. Um, but yes, so we are talking specifically about encounter buildings. Do you, or encounter buildings? These are things that we walk into? <laughs> no, <laughs> encounter building. So what, do you have a prelude for how you would like to go about maybe diving us in, exploring this topic? Uh, well, uh, well, maybe I'll give a little, little of the uh, like history how I kind of came into Ooh. doing this, and then yes. we can talk about some of the the patterns that work well, and maybe we can mm -hmm. uh, do some brainstorming with everybody. So, yes, okay. this is going to be fairly interactive, everyone. So get your keyboards ready. Get ready. <laughs> so uh, I started uh, homebrewing a world like back in high school, and this is like my old. Yes. Little book. See there, you that way. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, a few maps in there and everything too. So I was like into it early on, but I didn't have any other tools, um, and I didn't have a group that I could connect with regularly. Um, and with the, the resurgence of uh, you know tabletop role playing with five E and Critical Role and all that stuff, I really gave me a chance to get back into it. Um, so the last three years, I've been playing a weekly game with some yeah. friends, mm -hmm. uh, which has been great, and. Yeah. Um, about a year ago, I started professional DMing mm -hmm. uh, with the virtual play weekends that uh, Wizards of the Coast does. And that's been exciting. And Ooh. all of those games are different people that come in mm. every time. So I don't know who the people are until they show up. And uh, it's totally it's totally changed like how I have to look at the game. And uh, I know the story. And I know a bunch of potential encounters, but mixing and matching and telling the story and, and string it along as you're going and creating stories, is, is, it's a whole process that, yeah. that uh, yeah, yeah, we can get into here. So I, um, I mentored with the uh, Storytelling Collective and um, uh, followed a bunch of writers online and, and using not just like, you know, role-playing experience, but also like writing and, and, yeah. and things that I pulled from that to, to do this too. So, um, Let's see. I think, you know, also uh, another important thing is that like storytelling is an ancient skill, especially yeah. like when we do it as a group around the campfire, you know? <laughs> and so yes. uh, I think this is something we can all do. And um, uh, it does take some practice to do, to do collaborative storytelling, but uh, mm -hmm. it's a challenge worth doing. And it's something that we kind of need, right? As, yeah. as people, so. Mm -hmm. um, I think then uh, the um, writing that I've done uh, with the Anholt Wildlands, uh, mm -hmm. you know, kind of came from, uh, it gave me a setting and a place to kind of develop all kinds of ideas. Yeah. Uh, so having that, understanding your setting, having those themes, knowing the tropes that you want to use, that all kind of goes into it too. It makes it easier. So uh, like we do with the challenges or the different prompts that come up, uh, for yeah. for for uh, World Ember or for summer camp, like those actually help you do things too. So some of it comes, some of that comes into play. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, my setting uh, is a high magic swords and sorcery kind of thing. So it's just fun to imagine how would little things happen with these special abilities and magic, and mm -hmm. but there's still some boundaries in there to work with. So it's, that kind of gives you the whole mm -hmm. whole piece of it. Um, so I think I think. Uh, uh, I'll give an example with, of an encounter with my setting. Then I have a really good story from one of the virtual weekends, uh, some, some stuff that happened, and then we'll brainstorm. <gasps> nice. Okay. okay. Yes. Okay. Take it away. If you need to share anything, there is a share button at the bottom. Uh, I'm not going to go away, but let's see if I can make myself just a little. No. Oh, 
Just a little small. That didn't work. Okay, never mind. Don't worry. Keep going. I'll, I'll <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's not how this works. That's okay. I'm just going to get uh, my reaction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll bring up the uh, other stuff once we get into the brainstorming part. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, the, um, okay, so um, what is, well, first of all, like, you know, what is an encounter? Ooh. Are you asking me or do you want us to ask chat? Maybe we should ask the chat, see what everybody says. All right, chat. What is, uh, now what, did, what was the exact question? What, what is an encounter? So I was going to give, give, give some examples um, and, and then I'm going to break that down. But uh, maybe we should, before we do that, we should just ask, what does everybody think an encounter is? Yeah. Hello, chat. Are you alive? Is anyone there? I see 18 people online. Are all of you <laughs> lurkers? <laughs> Uh, combat karaoke says Katoy Point. Yeah, that's an encounter. That's <laughs> a fight with the Neogi Master. Yes, yes. I think that's that what you just said, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Katoy Point. <laughs> well, uh, an encounter is a scene, and um, when you think about it as that, you, it's like you're the basic building block of your story. Yeah. And um, uh, all encounters have certain pieces of it you know we talked about the setting um but uh in uh some of the examples i'm going to give we're going to have a uh hey i like uh, there's everything is an encounter it, it, it really is like that's this is the basic building block of the whole adventure or the whole campaign or the whole session um uh, so you have your location and you usually have something you need to do or accomplish and then there's a roadblock in the way yeah. And so if we were at the, let's say in my setting, the Red Line Inn, that's what I did my adventure April. Mm. That's where we started. And uh, we're waiting for a package. That's our goal, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so we just got to be there and wait for the package. It could be super simple. Doesn't have to be anything tricky. You don't even have to go anywhere. Um, <laughs> but there could still be obstacles. Like there's some Tonya guards there that are going to inspect every package that comes through. Maybe you don't want anybody to see it. Or there's some cultists, like, uh, people that you don't know from like yeah. the gate that you don't know what they're going to do. <clears throat> and then there's always the thieves guild you got to watch out for. So, you know, if your package is coming through a special delivery, they might want to take a lot of look at it before you get it. So, uh, and the trick is, and what do you do with all these things? So now you're in this place waiting, but all these other people are there too. Do you, are you proactive? You know, or do you, do you set things against each other? Uh, and this, this, uh, twists and layers, um, what are the motivations of all these people? What are their quirks, right? Those are the things that start to make this interesting and you can still tell a story with it. And you as the DM or the GM, if you know, uh, these groups, you know, the NPCs, you know, your location, you know what the, everybody's trying to do, you can real quickly respond to whatever they come up with, because you know, players will come up with the most wild ideas possible. And um, uh, the first time I actually so, so this set this setup here is an encounter that I actually ran. And the first time I did it, uh, everybody went to the guards and told them the Thieves Guild was here. <laughs> so the guards went after the Thieves Guild. And then they sat down and they talked to the cultists. And so they did a lot of uh, social work to prevent a fight. The second group uh, pulled the thieves go aside at like in, in the back and like tried to intimidate him. It failed. So there's a knife fight in the back room. Um, and, uh, so that ended up being a combat. Um, and, uh, um, the, uh, so, so you can use, you can take the same thing and run it different ways. Um, and, uh, if the package got lost along the way and a deliver and a person comes in and says, I was robbed, then you got to go, chase the package and that's more like an exploration yeah so um uh i guess uh that's that's my lead into the pill three pillars of role playing right the combat social and exploration and you can use those and you can mix and match them and really when you come up with an encounter your encounter could actually be all three of those and you can prep that ahead of time so that no matter what the players do, you can mix and match. So you could start with a social encounter and switch to the combat one. You could uh, be in the combat one, like you, you have aggressive players that just go right in, and like yeah, even want to intimidate the guards in that situation. And uh, it could switch to um, an exploration or uh, um, 
because uh, somebody bursts through the door at the last minute and says, I've been robbed. I don't have the package anymore. So um, that is a it gives you it gives you a framework so you can take the encounter and you can go any direction the players want to go with it. Um, and that makes it feel more alive to them. It's more entertaining for you as the game master. And uh, it can really bring the whole setting to life. So that's that, that's sort of like my my general flow for most encounters. <clears throat> and if you really, you can layer it with complexity. So my uh, critical role example is that there's a new hardcover book um, and we're playing this with the virtual weekends now, the virtual play weekends. And I have, a, I have a player that's come back to my table a couple times and she has a, a cleric <clears throat> who um, has a sister who was her ally and helped her do lots of things. But her father was horrible. This is her backstory. And um, she left her sister to pursue her, you know, her faith. And here uh, she came to find out later that her um, uh, father had done something horrible. And she didn't really find out all the details because she wasn't around anymore. So she knew that, that something bad had happened and she loved her sister and she hated her father. Uh, they were on the road. They had to get from one city to the next. Of course, there were all kinds of encounters. One, they came up to a wrecked wagon. They did the whole investigation. They caused a lot of noise, though. And so I mixed in a, an encounter that would have potentially happened, not happened, or would have happened later. Because they made so much noise, bandits were alerted. And the bandits came closer. And after they looted the uh, wagon, then the bandits were like, hey, give us that loot. Um, but in the... Uh, tokens on the virtual tabletop that I was using, I put the player's sister as one of the tokens with the bandits. And the sister was sold by her father to the bandits. And what started as a social like negotiation with the bandits, like, hey, no, you know, they, the players started to say, well, maybe we'll give you some, but we're going to like, you know, and so they tried to negotiate. And when the, the player that, uh, saw her sister, her character's sister there. She was like, that's my sister. And then they ran toward each other. And then the uh, bandits said, stop, and had some of the other bandits fire on them. And it just, you know, then everybody was like uh, up in arms and they were charging into a fight with like 15 bandits. There's only five of them. So they were, they, they became very brave and uh, they, were, they were determined to get the sister back. So it was, it was an exciting thing to experience. And we just mixed and mashed all kinds of stuff. And the two encounters got merged together and we went different directions. And uh, the player afterwards, the player was very excited about that. So I think that's a great moment to, it was great for me to experience, but it was great for her too. And and the other players, uh, one was a, um, what was she, a fire genasi, but she was a spell caster, uh, a, a, a sword singer, I guess it was. And, and she was like, she was really inspired by this too. So she ran forward and, and attacked the bandit captain directly. And as you do. As a, right, exactly. <laughs> Although her, yeah, I mean, she didn't have the highest armor and that kind of thing. She just like charged right in and, and everybody's like, oh, we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so that's, that, those are some of my examples and um, hopefully I'm not, actually I'm kind of getting excited now. So hopefully I'm not talking too fast. Um, You're but, good. Okay, good. Um, you know, the idea of this encounters can be modular and, you know, an idea, one idea is not so precious that so you can't replace it with something else. Um, uh, mixing and matching, yeah, <laughs> mixing and matching <laughs> pillars. And the, the whole thing is like, sort of like, um, brainstorming, right. And troubleshooting. Mm -hmm. And I've read that creativity is actually troubleshooting. Ooh. So uh, when you're when you're thinking about you know I'm stuck you know and what's going to happen and how am I going to come up with the next thing you know ask why or you know what and uh, you know try to troubleshoot like if if a giant alligator is here <laughs> what else does that mean <laughs> what does it mean <laughs> <laughs> how did he get there and you know who's in control and why is it why is it why aren't they in control anymore. And, and so all of a sudden, uh, you can start figuring out the motivations of uh, your bad guy, your good guy, your NPCs, real quickly just in your mind as you're as you're going. Um, and so even if you have to improvise, because the players go way off the track, 
you can uh, follow these general guidelines and, and hopefully still come up with uh, entertaining encounters for everybody. Yeah. So I guess we're at the point now. I think I kind of like burned through everything. Uh, we can, <laughs> we can, uh, You're very excited. Yeah. We can um, uh, see if anybody has any questions. We can actually then maybe do do, do another example and actually make our own encounter here mm -hmm. while we're live uh, If you'd like, we can show the worksheet and start to kind of go through it just to show kind of what our process is going to look like as then mm -hmm. we go through the rest. But to remind everybody, remember, you have world anvil points. So that's going to be the flaming anvil near the little chat box where you can type and send messages. If you want to send us a question, please send it through there because that'll highlight the questions for us on our end and that'll really help us out. So. Remember, if you have questions, use your anvil points, the little flaming world anvil icon next to the chat box. All right, so let me go ahead and do my darndest to share screen. Let's see. Okay, yes, share screen. We're going to do upper tab. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, that is my browser. Don't judge me. Here we are. Ta da! Yay. Encounter planning. And you guys probably can't see it, so we're going to try to zoom in. There we go. Is that a little bit better? That seems a little bit better. Yes. yes. So um, we kind of hit on these, the location, goal, and obstacle. Um, uh, so you, everybody knows the three pillars, but instead of starting with them, start with the location, goal, and obstacle first. Mm -hmm. And then let, let you know, you can kind of think through the other part. So um, if your goal was to get a beer, right? And you're in the tavern and the obstacle is simply, you know, going up to the bar to get one. Mm -hmm. uh, the combat could be you go fight the bartender for one, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, social, you'd be haggle for it, maybe try to get half price. Mm -hmm. uh, an explanation, you, know, you go up, they're out, you got to like go in the back room or down to the basement and, you know, there's always something down there. Mm -hmm. So uh, you got to like work your way around, avoid the traps, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As you do. <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, uh, the, the, the three pillars are there to support the, uh, um, the account that you kind of set up. And sometimes it's easy to flip that. And, and that slows you down. Like, cause you think this has to be a combat encounter. You can really get it real easily then railroad your party and get stuck in that when really it could be any of these. And if you maintain that flexibility, you can kind of makes it easier for you to, uh, navigate. So we're going to start with uh, location, goal, and obstacle. Um, so what would be a good location? Uh, this would be a good question for chat. Yeah, chat, please, if you could supply us with any location that your heart desireth. <laughs> Otherwise, I, I will be forced to come up with one. While we're seeing what they come up with, I see Katoi Poi has a question there. Do we want to do questions? Yeah, we can do a little bit of questions right now. So Toy Boy's question is, do you strictly play Adventures League or do you use your own adventures? Is there a market for homebrew? Asking for friend. <laughs> um, so most of the uh, uh, paid games I do is, are Adventure League. And um, Adventures League just gives you a way to uh, have a ongoing story um, or an ongoing character where players can have ongoing characters. And there's general rules so that they can join a table, join a totally different table and still be that same character and have a way to progress. Yeah. Um, so for somebody that can only play every other month or once a quarter or, um, you know, more infrequently even, uh, they, can, yeah. they can still, still participate. Um, uh, but there's lots of people that play every month. Uh, and, and then uh, we, we built up great uh, connections that way. Um, I also do play my own games and you can you can um uh sell those on uh, uh dm's guild or uh itch.io or um mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. drive through rpg those types of places yeah. um and uh you can all you know certainly uh people once you once you start playing with people and they know the types of things you're doing um you know uh that that collaborative storytelling is a thing that keeps people coming back. So um, you can, you can uh, work with, continue working with your, your, uh, 
people that want to play with you and uh, kind of build from there. So it's, it, I think there's, I think you can build your own homebrew market and, uh, you know, connecting with networks and players and that kind of stuff in different places could be a way to, to do that. I'm learning about this. Thank you very much for the answer. <laughs> By yeah. the way, we were supplied a location. E. Armstrong Ooh. says, any location? A festival. Oh, a festival is so good. Festival's so good. Thank you, okay. E. Armstrong. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a whole little side side thought there. Um, because festivals let players sort of like test their skills. Yes. Used to who their player is. So um, in uh, Witch Beyond the Wild Light, or Wild Beyond the Witch Light, um, uh, and uh, the current critical role book, there was early on in the book, there was a festival. And yes. it really gives you a chance, especially when you're playing with a totally new setting, yeah. to understand what's going on. Um, mm -hmm. So festival is a great location. Okay, so festival is mm -hmm. our location. Yes, yes. Um, our goal, it can be big, it can be little. Uh, big. Uh, we could, we could, so our next thing is to set a goal for, we're in the festival. Maybe we want to play a game. Maybe we want to like get on the <gasps> stage and be able to like play a song. Wait, okay, okay, you got one. <laughs> uh, finding a missing performer. Oh, somebody's late. Somebody's late. Somebody's missing. We don't know where he is. Okay, okay. All right, <laughs> the uh, the MC of the whole event or something like that, or mm -hmm. yeah. <gasps> the one guy. Yeah. Yeah, the guy. <laughs> the guy. Um, can't do it without him. He's the one blowing all the fireworks. Right, right there you go. He's, he's the one that's got like the key to set off the fireworks, the magic wand. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, so um, we got to find him. And so the obstacle, of course, is he's missing. He's <laughs> then, missing. Um, all right. So uh, we have a festival who is missing the MC for the final event. And the obstacle, of course, is he's missing, but we can't we can't launch the event. Like it, fireworks go, won't go off. We can't even do it. So we can't even start without him. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So we quickly got to find him. All right. Yeah. So now the, the interesting thing about this, um, uh, of course, is that uh, we can go to the, the combat social exploration here in a second. But I want to mention, like, as we pick those things and we flesh it out, we're going to realize oh, there's details about the location and the obstacle that's going to come into play. And that's what the bottom half of this page is what yeah. we're going to go into. Um, so we've already figured out there's an NPC, the missing guy. Yeah. And uh, that's, an, that's a detail that's going to go down there. So I'm just going to mention that now. But going back okay. up to the top. Um, uh, Do you want me to you, scroll back up? <laughs> Let me know. Scroll back up. Go, go ahead, scroll back up. Uh, so there's a little, like, we're, we're, we're on the right track. You know, things yeah. are coming together because we got we got an NPC that's going to be important here. Mm -hmm. um, so, if we're trying to find him, and we let's brainstorm real quick. What are what are three pillar things that could happen? Um, so, exploration is going to be the most likely one. I think in this case, right? We're going to yeah. have to go around and try to like see where he could be, mm -hmm. find his last location, interview people. Um, so, uh, it might start with that, and yeah. then we. Um, we might go find him. Maybe he's been captured by somebody. So, so uh, um, the combat could be um, uh, find if uh, the MC's been captured by a rival or a, yeah, a rival troop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that, right? Um, and uh, the social could be, um, yeah, he is stuck at the the uh, tavern tent. Oh, no. Uh, he's trying, to get, trying to get one last beer in, and he doesn't want to go. And he's, like, okay. uh, maybe having some sage, right? So, like, no one, no one likes him. me anyway. <laughs> yes, you got to convince <laughs> him to go. <laughs> um, so, so we've got, uh, uh, you know, a, a rival that's trying to upstage him or, sh or maybe show that he's no good and, and then mm -hmm. uh, get, get, get in next year for the, the festival. Um, we've got the social uh, encounter where he's, like, getting that last beer down and maybe a little nervous about going on stage and then exploration. So mm -hmm. um, uh, that gives us a nice overview of like what's going to, what could potentially happen. Yeah. And we can plan some of this out so that we can be faster at the, at the actual encounter. Now mm -hmm. I've, I've run into situations where in my mind, as players are coming up with things, I'm like running through these six things 
because I don't, I, they just came up with something brand new and I just like come up, come up with something. But that could, that would give you enough to like, that could take half an hour to an hour to play on a table. Yeah. <laughs> You're going around the festival trying to find this guy. Oh, he's in a tavern and, and mm-hmm. yeah, they, you've got the social one. Or, oh no, he's, we can't find him. And then somebody finds a clue that maybe he has been, uh, you find his like hat and he would never be without his hat. Um, so now you've got like a quirk about this NPC. Mm-hmm. Um, so as you're trying to piece this together and troubleshoot and brainstorm as the party's making these plans, you can you just run with it from there. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. uh, but uh, uh, if you have time to plan, the next step would be to go down for them to this document and then fill in your overview. Uh, what kind of twists and turns? What secrets are there? Um, what are things that the uh, game master needs to know ahead of time? You know, this is to save yourself time, but also if you want to sell it, uh, like we were talking with Toy Poi, that if somebody else is trying to interpret what you're, what you're doing, you don't hide any secrets from the game master. Like you, when you're writing an encounter, you got to say everything up front. So if there's right. a secret bad guy, you can't keep it secret from the game master. You got to like put that in the overview. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, uh, nothing hidden here is what I put in the, in that little blurb. Um, and plus, you got to keep it short. You know, if yeah. somebody's reading this, sometimes they only have five minutes before this encounter to do it. Uh, yeah. So you're looking at like 300 words max. Um, so you have to get get good at like narrowing those words down and getting the important pieces. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so for as our as possible, yeah, yeah, go ahead, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, for our encounter that we kind of came up here with here. Um, we need a couple places. We need a couple things, right? We need to know uh, if he's been kidnapped. You know, what, what, which tent is he in? What's it look like? If he's at the the, the tavern tent, what does that look like? And um, uh, yeah, maybe he's you know, or in any, any other tavern uh, tents we want to do. So that that the, so we've got a couple tents to describe. Uh, we know that there's a um, rival, right? Yeah. So we got to describe the rival. That's an NPC. We know there's the guy himself, the MC who's hiding or captured or something. Yeah. <laughs> so we got two two NPCs that are pretty important to describe. Mm-hmm. And maybe this rival has hired like some thugs, some goons. Yeah, right? <laughs> so now we need a stat block, and um, uh, we can uh, kind of put all these pieces together in the details. Yeah. Yeah. And voila, your your players have things to interact with now. Right. And you've fleshed out quirks where they're going to be, what they need to do. Yeah. You're ready to go. Um, it's ready to go. And it's one page. Yeah. And so you quick, quick and easy. Um, sometimes you can do it on the fly. If you have a chance to plan ahead, uh, that one uh, critical role uh, session that I was referring to, it was, a, it was an interesting one because they had seven random encounters you could do Whoa. and only one fixed encounter. So Ooh. you could, depending on your party, you could end up playing five encounters. You could play seven encounters. You use, so it, every time I run it, it's totally different and you could do them in different order. Um, so uh, the story becomes different then too with, with that. And I think, I think the trick with mixing and matching encounters is including what is happening in that one mm-hmm. and maybe like one carryover thing, like leading into the next thing. Yeah. Something like connective also, tissue. Right. Right. Uh, so also including like, uh, I, I try to think of like three of the five senses, right. Mm-hmm. What are they smelling? What are the, you know, what time of day is it? Um, uh, what, uh, you know, what, what are they hearing? And um, that can change over the, the course of several encounters and that can be part of your story too. Mm-hmm. dude nice yeah. and that also gives way that kind of flexibility gives way to a lot of creativity in fact i see katoy Poi has added here you have to learn how long each encounter takes to account for the time you're allotted i was doing a lot of calculus today definitely an art to it actually <laughs> yes. i'm gonna out myself real quick on on twitch because i feel really bad i told katoy Poi he had one less hour than he initially did and this man just took it in stride man's a genius i'm so sorry and thank you for adapting <laughs> 
but yeah, yeah, it's a it's a kind of calculus. Is there a way actually leading more into that that you can determine how long an encounter will take? Uh, well, if you go by the pillars, that can help you, right? Like exploration. Yeah. So social tends to be the shortest. Mm -hmm. um, exploration uh, uh, is a little bit longer, usually. Um, more descriptions. Uh, yeah. um, combat is the longest. So what you got to do with combat is try to keep people moving. So when you, yeah. when you realize like, oh, this is going long, uh, you can try to like carry the descriptions to like move people along faster. Mm -hmm. um, you can also, I think a toy point just, just did this er earlier when the main fight has shifted, like it's shifted into to the balance of the players. Mm -hmm. You can roll out of combat. Yeah. That's like, oh, they're weak enemies. You kill them. They have six hit points. Don't worry about it. Yeah, Everyone's yeah. like, cool, cool, cool. You, you know, you, you tell that into the story. You don't have to like just totally, you know, dodge off of it. You can, yeah. you can keep, keep people engaged. But mm -hmm. um, you could cut 15 minutes off the combat if you just wrap it up once they've hit that point. And, um, you know, a, a combat can be totally scary for players, even though they may be overpowering enemies when it's that first round and they get hit hard. The, the dice rolls go after them and they're like, ah! Morale falls. It's like, yeah, what are we even yeah. doing here? Paladins yeah. out of smites. <laughs> Yeah, I had uh, five players facing three will o one time, and the will o got three natural 20s. No! <laughs> there's no way that should have been a major encounter, but it was. <laughs> no <way. laughs> These will o showed up. <laughs> yeah. so, but, that, but after the first round, the, the players kind of regrouped, but it was like yeah. this epic, epic slog then. And, uh, uh, so you, you never know what will happen. But well, once they got ahead of it, then, then right, you can... Right. The will was run, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> and then they're dead. Yeah. <laughs> and that, and that's, I guess that's another example of how you can cut the combat short, is that some some enemies aren't going to just stick around. What is their motivation? And knowing, knowing what your NPC's motivation is will tell you, like, this should not be a fight to the death, uh, three-hour-long combat. It should be, yeah. you know, 15 minutes, and when, mm -hmm. once the uh, enemy is uh, in trouble, they're going to... They're going to dodge and get out of there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To bring up another example from Katoy Point, the dinosaur ran. <laughs> the dinosaur didn't right. stick around. He's like, I'm out. There's no food in here. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. And those, those are things that uh, um, make sense to everybody and kind of helps with the immersion, too. It's like combat doesn't have to be this clockwork thing. The clockwork helps to keep everybody, like, organized. Uh, but uh, you can you can mix it up on everybody. <laughs> I think uh, if I can just add in something a, a little more concrete regarding time, I think the only way you personally will know how long an encounter will take depends severely on your style. Uh, for example, I love descriptions. Uh, sometimes I use them a little too haphazardly. So my social encounters and my exploration are actually pretty long because I like to describe the intrigue, the shadows against the wall as someone is entirely morose, et cetera, et cetera. I love those little details. Anyway, so you have to run these encounters and like time yourself if you can in order to figure out how long they're going to last for you. But these pillars help create a more succinct schematic for you to run that on. Yeah. Yeah. Is, that a, yeah. is that a summation? Is that, would you yeah, say that's that's good. Accurate? That's good. Nice. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, and, and I think you, I think you realistically, a major encounter can easily with five to six players can take 45 minutes. Yeah. So you know, you know that you've got like, if you've got a major encounter, a major battle, you, you've got to set that time aside. And then um, it's always good to um, start with some social time. So everybody can kind of get used to, rolling so you know mm -hmm. i try to plan 20 minutes at the beginning for that and then i would look for the major combat encounters and then fit the other pieces in around it so i knew that that one critical role one has an hour set social encounter mm -hmm. and everything else could be mixed and matched around that one hour um <clears throat> so i got my 20 minutes at the beginning i got that one hour if i'm going and and those games are four hours long um if I'm at the three hour mark and I'm not in that social encounter yet, I got to move. Hustle. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I think um, you, you can kind of, you got to read through the, through the session. If you're doing a one shot, yeah. you've got to look at the encounters. If you're just doing an encounter and kind of like 
have that in your mind what you're going into time wise. So um, I have I have to uh, I will admit that in my home game I've walked into sessions with only encounter ideas and no plan. Um, <laughs> and see what they come up with is, a, is always a good strategy right um, so uh i will we know the general things that they need to be doing so they do have goals and uh, we know where they're starting from and uh i say okay so how are we going to you know do this first thing and as they're brainstorming that i'm like okay combat social exploration here's my npcs oh a stat block i need a cobalt <laughs> Definitely a cobalt. <laughs> yes. Just going to restart this. <laughs> and look at, make it look like something else. They'll never know. Pack tactics, they'll never know. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but you're still following the same process, and yeah. uh, um, you're just doing it on the fly. So that, that way yeah. you can get faster, and when you get comfortable, then you can just go off the rails like that and mm-hmm. let players re- truly explore and then you end up exploring too. Like the weekly game that I do plays in, <clears throat> I think like Katoy Play has his world that is his actually D&D game too. Nice. And okay. when when we're playing these weekly games like that, some of the stuff unfolds before me. Like I didn't know that stuff was there. And that's amazing. Yeah. And that's, that's super fun. So. Mm-hmm. Whenever the collaborative storytelling comes alive between players and the GM, live for that shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. Oops. Well, it's okay, true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got ahead of myself. <laughs> Enough of the poop jokes. Yeah. <laughs> it's still going. It's still going. It's still going. Um, I am now concerned, Katoipoi, with what was just said. What's your favorite part? He says, that's my favorite p- uh, part about RPGs. I'm assuming you mean the collaborative spirit coming alive. <laughs> yeah. And not not not, not body humor, although maybe both. Why not both? Anyway, <laughs> I have I have one mode of joke today, and it's no one's fault. <laughs> but anyway, I think I think uh, collaborative proof jokes. Okay, there you go. I will display this on stream. I'm getting paid for this. Nice. <laughs> All right, I can die happy now. Bye, guys. <laughs> yeah. I think I think one other thing to consider is once you get once somebody accomplishes this encounter, like you do need to think about rewards and results, right? Like yeah. it's not uh, these these encounters. There has to be some some kind of feedback to the players then too. Um, doesn't always have to be treasure, <clears throat> but uh, some kind of conclusion. And um, so again, we're kind of following this like. Um, you know, a, a, almost a story model, right? And, and yeah. um, uh, you know, one of the um, things that I've, I've uh, a couple of things I've done with uh, organizing and uh, sales and that kind of stuff, like, because I've run my own business, I've done, yeah. done some community work. And, you know, one of the, one of the things I've heard was challenge, choice, and outcome. So, when, when there's a challenge and your players choose to like engage with that, there should be some kind of like reward or like outcome from it. And even if it's not a win, right? And this is like the falling forward idea. If it's not a win, there needs to be some kind of like a moment where you review like what happened and where, where, where it went. So there should be some kind of result as, uh, uh, as you put all these pieces together. And if you can plan that a little bit ahead of time, that is, that is a weight off of you. Because when you get to the end, um, then you're at this moment like, ah, what happens now? <laughs> so yeah. just uh, taking a few minutes on, on your encounter to plan the result is a great way to uh, let you almost be like able to read ahead to the next encounter then <clears throat> because yeah. you kind of just feed through the result and get back on the road mm-hmm. and continue mm-hmm. there. So on my, my document here at the, at the bottom. Um, Shall I scroll? Uh, yep, go ahead and scroll down. Uh, does the uh, you know how does the, how does this encounter end? So you can kind of plan out a couple of different ways based on the pillars. Uh, mm-hmm. You can see what the players come up with, and I'm sure that one of those endings that you've come up with can like at least somewhat match, or you can mix and match them. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like some questions are like, does this line up with your next step in your story? Um, is there uh, if you're is this encounter is part of a one shot? Uh, what are give the GM points to like go to the next step like? What's the next set of discovery? Like, uh, um, and um, 
you know, I think this makes it easy for you to adapt and it actually should help prevent railroading too, because yeah. you're like, okay, this is the moment, let everybody regroup, let let the players decide what's going on next. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. you're kind of like giving them the clues. Like, so if this was a encounter where you've, you know, rescued the uh, MC from the uh, um, clutches of the evil rival, um, the next thing to do, of course, is still to get him back to the, uh, to the event. And then at that point, moment so you can have the success and the rockets go off and and then perhaps there's a development thing where he says you've 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 rekindled my faith or you know i've yeah uh, i'm I'm gonna try some more but maybe you could take me to the next town to the next festival Mm -hmm. and then they have their next uh uh adventure on the road Uh, i have someone i want to introduce you to there you go right Mm -hmm. (laughs) Wesker has has appeared yes Um, <laughs> yep. So you can take the results and just start going through with what you've written, just getting that guy to the stage finally. And then all of a sudden other ideas will start popping in and you can be ready for the next thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Percolating ideas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then the results is definitely a spot too where I, I put max 300 words again, because you, you can't go on and on and on with that. You've got to keep it compact. Okay. Mm-hmm. Especially if this is uh, this is in the context that we're going to be sharing it with someone that someone else will be reading it, and you're not there to go. And this is amazing because blah, 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 and then you just yeah. have to explain. <laughs> it has to be concise. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I've seen encounters, uh, individual encounters sold on DMs Guild. I've seen um, you know full set. You know we, we've done one shots for Adventure April, um, and one shots would be filled with like three to five encounters, uh, maybe yeah. more. Uh, so like this, this gives you a way to um, plan a whole bunch of things and kind of like take it step by step from, from there. Yeah. Let me scroll back up then. Here you go. And for anyone curious what document we are looking at currently, uh, this is the worksheet, which uh, George Sanders has made for us, which I will be disseminating about the community uh, at the very end of this. So please stay tuned. Yes. So. Great. We have, yay, about a little over 15 minutes. Do you want to try to use this worksheet to do what we do best? Okay. <laughs> All right. Let me see if I can share my screen again. Yes, that's cool. We're going to go to an opera tab. We're going to go to... Uh, yes. Uh, for those of you uh, new to World Anvil, welcome to Whiteboards. <laughs> Yay. Yay. I hope you guys can see it. And if you can't, don't worry, I'll be zooming in and zooming all about this page. Uh, I am still getting used to using the space bar, but fear not. Uh, here are our little blocks, which we can put and move wherever we want. Uh, this is probably just going to be <laughs> uh, just idea fillers, but here we go. So we're going to build yet another campaign. Do we want to pull from the audience? Uh, any one of these, Mr. Sanders? Uh, let's see here. So how about, um, <clears throat> I think, uh, let's do it. Let's do it in reverse, right? Let's, in reverse? Let's do, let's do obstacle. What's the obstacle that we're running into? All right, let me, let me, let me go see. Uh, it's collaborative, right? So your players uh, should be trying to help you as well. I agree, Sable, 100%. Mm-hmm. In fact, let me display that. La la. Yeah. Yeah. There is yeah, a little it, bit. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, even if you're like brainstorming this on the fly and, and you're, you're, you, you have an idea for like um, the goal because you, your players are already on that path and yeah. you know that they're going to run into something on the road, you can kind of let them pick like where are you at? so how far did you get today and and uh do you guys want to make camp you know that's the that's the common question right uh but classic question but, but come up with something else related to like uh you know uh have you run into anything on the road today let them pick something mm-hmm. uh so the location could be something that uh you know you're on the road you know that uh there's an obstacle there and uh see what they see what they throw out you know that, that could yeah. be way of doing yeah. this so you don't always, don't always have to start with location. You can start with the obstacle that you want to like explore. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and 
and see if anybody comes up with an obstacle. Yeah, let's see. Let's see, guys. Also, uh, just to bring up, I see we have an Anna Caroline SS who had noted being a DM is something that I've always wanted to do, but I'm scared to do it. And uh, honestly, please tune in for these streams because you can always ask us here, uh, your community, for advice all the time. This is specifically a stream that we're doing with Play May involved, but we have community streams as well that you can tune into for advice, as well as an entire Discord of Game Masters who like have been where you've been. The only sure. reason, yeah, the only reason I am DMing today at all, the, the reason that I'm appearing before before you, is that my dad DM'd. I don't know that I'd be a DM if my dad hadn't been a DM. That's why I'm called Second Gen DM on all my socials. But anyway, let's see. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing, I think, okay, uh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that um, uh, you don't have to know the rules, right? Yeah. And... Um, if you notice here, I've not said anything about like perception checks or, mm -mm. Uh, you know, specific stat blocks. Once we get down to the fact that, oh, we have an NPC and they have thugs, well then, okay, then I got to get stat block. Yeah. But you don't need to know that stuff to build your encounter first. That, it can be really system agnostic. This is a general tool. And uh, so if you're worried about like, do I know the rules? How do I like lead everybody? Those type of things. Uh, some of those uh, really get resolved if you kind of plan this out each encounter and let your players help you. Mm -hmm. maybe, it's not, maybe it won't feel quite so overwhelming then. And it's just a couple little steps. You take five encounters, you've got a session. You take uh, five sessions, you got a whole campaign. Yeah. <laughs> or at least at least one story arc in a campaign. So Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm, chat's fairly quiet about okay. an obstacle, so I, I think we have to come up with one ourselves. So define the genre. Hmm. All right. Uh, so I'm 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 just always on fantasy, but we could do something totally different. Um, but maybe we should if it's just, if we get to pick, then maybe we should just pick fantasy. We should we could just pick fantasy. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so something how about? Um, the obstacle, the obstacle is um, a herd of dinosaurs. <gasps> In honor of Janet, who is currently asleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. You know, I think I can make that a little bit bigger if that is what there is. It is what it is. Here we go. Yeah. Ta -da! Now you guys can see it for sure. <laughs> Okay, so right. uh, now, now that kind of like informs us, like, so you know, uh, what, 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 why is that even an obstacle? Well, we have to uh, get to the town to deliver a message. Ooh. So now we have our goal. All right, let me and yeah, yeah, go ahead, I'll let you make it big. Oh, no, please. Really big. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Please. I just want to feed my wife and kids. There we go. Oh, that's it's too large. All right, fine, fine, fine. Small. Okay. Um Say la vie. so we know that we're not in the town yet. Mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. are let's see, where would dinosaurs be? I guess we could go with jungle. We eh, they could be in the desert too, right? Yeah. Right? There are also um, Arctic dinosaurs, which is terrifying. Ooh. All right. Uh how about, um, let me think of some. Also, a herd of dinosaurs doesn't necessarily have to be on land. A herd of like whale-like dinosaurs in the water would be terrifying. We could oh, okay. be on a boat. We could be on a boat. Okay, all right. So so we're on a boat uh, trying to get into the port, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was remembering the song. <laughs> uh, trying to get the port. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Okay, that's part of the goal, though. So, <laughs> oh, uh, uh, I see the that, port uh, town. Yeah, yeah. We got ideas like Mars and uh, Alpine Ooh, Forest. Polar Sea, Alpine Forest, Katoy Point. You are the best. Let's see. <laughs> okay, I I am in the mood for a Mars ocean. <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> on a so boat. We could, we could we could do fantasy exploration of Mars here, right? So Mars has been terraformed in this yeah, and, 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 fantasy future. Yeah, fantasy future where the 
society has collapsed and and now the magic has yes. taken over. Yeah. I'm so here for this. <laughs> oh, and, and sandworms or polar Ooh. seals. Okay. I don't know how we're going to pick between those uh, uh, monster set blocks. We'll, Maybe we'll see. that's our social encounter. Maybe we have to get friendly with some sandworms. <laughs> Okay, so the, the dinosaurs are in the waters of the Mars polar uh, ocean, and um, we had to get past them. Okay, so uh, combat, of course, we could, like, fight our way through, right? Mm -hmm. So that one's, fight the dinos. That, yeah, that's that one's often, like, the easiest one, um, but it can have twists and turns, too. Mm -hmm. um, uh the um, it may it may end up being not a combat in the traditional sense. It may end up being a skill challenge, right? Ooh. A herd of dinosaurs uh, is a just like a moving river of like mass, right? Yeah. And uh, but maybe they'd be doing strength checks or um, avoiding them, like making sharp turns with the ship. And how how mobile is our ship? You know that that type of thing might come into play. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. <clears throat> I hope no one minds the clicky keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> so right. we have we have options for combat. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's you know. So as you get these ideas, you, like you, like you're doing, we want to make notes because we'll come down to them then in the further details. But um, yeah, yeah. Social. Okay. So now, of course, we could talk to dinosaurs, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or um, maybe even find out why they're so angry. Right, right. So, so some players will be able to talk to to animals or various mm -hmm. things. Some players might just be familiar with nature. Um, so it wouldn't be as simple as talking all the time with a dinosaur, but uh, trying to make it broader to say like some kind of um, <laughs> observation, right, of their behavior or uh, and communicating that way, maybe. Okay. Hang on. I got it. I got it. I, I need to figure out how to type again. <laughs> so observe dino behavior to negotiate around them. And that leaves it kind of open to is like, are we negotiating with the dinosaurs? Right, right. So now somebody with like a history skill or a uh, animal handling skill could potentially mm -hmm. be used here too. Yeah. So what might start as a combat could turn into animal handling or it could turn into uh, the social side of it, as they realize, oh, these these are migrating, oh. and they're migrating because of you know something we haven't yeah. covered yet. <laughs> and then more more adventures here. Mm -hmm. Let me and put so, that. Why are they migrating? <laughs> yeah. In all caps, because I think that was what the third Jurassic Park movie. Someone uh, correct me. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, and that and that sort of gets into the exploration piece of it, right? That uh, yeah. Um, once you realize like there's something bigger going on, mm -hmm. that becomes exploration. Like, oh, we've got more things to figure out. And um, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so you could you could explore you could explore that polar o ocean with I don't know some tech. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. Right. Or do you know detect magic or a um, uh, some other types of spells like divination types of things that might like give you clues into what's going on here. Like why are they migrating now? And is this out of normal season? And uh, if they've left their breeding area, maybe we should go to their breeding grounds first. And that yeah. that's the exploration. So, so go to the, go to the breeding grounds to find why they have navigated or why they've started migrating early. Yes. There we go. And excuse me, pardon me. Perfect. No, not perfect. Almost perfect. Now perfect. <laughs> well, Katorbury right. has find what they like to eat and lure them away. That's a that's a good social, Ooh, right? Oh, I am. If I can copy this and paste this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The yes. breeding, I like to go to the breeding grounds for exploration, and then. Uh, I, you know, because with, with social, you got to realize, like, you want to be able to keep it open to all players. So if you had come up with a really specific idea that only druids can do, because they can cheap shift or they can talk with plants or talk with animals, yeah, you, you better come up with, like, alternates for other characters. And then you're good to go. That's how you kind of know, like, you've done enough, is that uh, when you've got, like, the, the general circle of characters covered that mm -hmm. anybody can use their abilities, then then you can let it unfold as it 
as it may. And yeah. You don't have to worry about like panicking at the last moment. Yeah. I think Janet, real quick, would be proud that Herd of Dinosaurs is the biggest thing of text here that we have <laughs> so far. Yay. <laughs> Yay. We did this for you. <laughs> All right. Nice. Nice. But yeah, so we have we have done this so fast and we and that was that was like 10 minutes yeah that was 10 minutes and yeah so you have here an amazing tool that you can use to just quickly craft something if you have 10 minutes of your day where you can like oh god i need i need to prep something and i need to make sure that it's versatile enough for all these different kinds of players and for my party boom yeah done and then keeping it open so that it's not like druid focused or class focused, unless that's what you're doing, in which case go you. But yeah, having it open in that way is really beneficial. But I feel like I'm taking up time and I'm repeating with some of the things you've already said. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, that's, that's okay. I, I, th I think a lot of this does come down to like um, how writing and, and tabletop RPGs overlap, right? And, and yeah. uh, um, the director of Storytelling Collective is... Uh, a, she has her master's of arts in, in uh, English. Uh, you know, Janet was a uh, um, uh, write, writing books and doing things and also like uh, the, the music background, right? Uh, yeah. you know, so all these skills kind of overlap and, you know, don't let yourself get stuck thinking like this is just one thing. Like think about what skills you have and uh, what kind of things can come into play and, you uh, uh, you know, taking a little pressure off yourself, it, always breaking down the little steps is good. So like this, looking at the encounter and building up can be helpful. Yeah. Sometimes it's great to like have your big vision. Like I want this kind of, uh, you know, epic campaign, but yeah. you can also build it from the bottom. You know, start in a small town that has only a couple things going on, write up five encounters and see where it takes you. Yeah. Um, so like the, you only have one session planned. Uh, your players, you know, you're going to go like try to go for a couple months. Well, great. Uh, do that first session, figure see what comes up. Uh, you know, if we ran this one that we just did, we might find some epic things when we go to the breeding grounds. Once we get into the town, we might find, an, you know, a quest giver and all kinds of good things. Like there's a couple hooks already just in our notes that would be fun to kind of do. And um, uh, it doesn't have to necessarily be one way or the other, you don't have to have all that training and skills, but if you just like take what you've, you've experienced, like what you've seen in movies, uh, it's okay yeah. to use tropes. Um, when you mix and match them, it gets real dynamic real fast. <laughs> so um, you don't have to uh, remember your players will help. Um, let them get into it because actually that's why they're there, right? Like they, they want to yeah. tell the story too uh, of their character. So um uh, giving them them space to do that means that you don't have to do all of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So when it's a little overwhelming as a new DM, um, hopefully this this helps. Yeah, most yeah. definitely. And for all of you who have stayed into the end, I'm going to go ahead and put the worksheet down. Uh, but before I do, really quick, George Sanders, if you would like to go ahead and tell us where we can find you on socials, if there's anything you want to do with the worksheet, uh, oh, do, yeah, do yeah. let us know. <laughs> yeah, so... I am on uh, George Sanders underscore on Twitter. And um, uh, every Tuesday I run Tuesday Fiction. Uh, so we just post a bunch of uh, any, any short stories, uh, maps, uh, artwork, anything having to do with fiction uh, you, can, you can share. So what I thought was we share this PD or encounter planning uh, document. Mm -hmm. And on Tuesday, you can uh, type me up a summary and put the hashtag Tuesday Fiction on it, and you you can, and then I can uh, uh, reply to you from there. So it would be a fun way to interact and meet some new people, and uh, I can throw tips back at you, or it's like, oh, that's an exciting idea. Maybe we'll use it in something. That could be fun. <gasps> that could be fun. I've heard several people already say that uh, this I want to do this again, so we'll be passing this along to the people who would be most interested in hearing such things, because God only knows I'd love to do this every day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. 
But yes, so it is, we are drawing to a close. It is the end of the hour. And so I am here to give you guys a few closing remarks. And so George Sanders, I will retire you from the stream. I just want to thank you so much for being here and for sharing your wisdom for everything that you have done and shown us and made the worksheet. You are awesome. I appreciate thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Au revoir. Everyone say thank you and goodbye. All right. And last few closing remarks. Allow me just a moment to change the banner. Uh, let's hide this one. Let's show this one. Perfect. All right. Ladies and gentlemen of World Anvil and everyone else in between, thank you so much for being here. This has been Play May Day and Adventure April and RPG Celebration. Thank you guys so much for being here. We want to hear back from you. Please, in our Discord, in challenge discussion, this is technically this is technically part of the April challenge still. It counts. Please give us all of your feedback. Tag me. Tag the community. Let us know how you thought about today. And additionally, uh, please let us know uh, how the worksheets treat you guys. We're very interested to know how exactly you guys are going to be using this. Let us know. You can always add us on Twitter to show us how you're using it in your world and different things, if it's helpful and what have you. Anyway, so... Now, I want to thank you all once again for being here. All 20 of you who made it until the end of the stream, you are amazing beans. Uh, uh, real quick, I'm gonna wait like 30 seconds here. Does anyone have any questions? Like, hey, are we gonna do this again? Uh, Cause I can always take that to Janet and Demetrius. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna wait here. I asked you a point of question and an open question. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds just to see. I'll display your messages in the meantime. Yay! <laughs> Do it again! Do it again! Do it again! Okay. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. <laughs> Let's see, it would be fun to do encounters for various settings people work on. That would be fun. Genres and what have you. Oh my God says, do it again. All right, all right, the people, the people have spoken. Anna Carolyn asks, will we have some writing, uh, some sprints for writing again? Yes, as a matter of fact, thank you so much for reminding me. Uh, we do have question of the week streams, which are happening on Sundays. However, they're going to be less focused on questions of the week going forward after this one and more focused on doing homework. So in June and July, I am only going to be doing uh, writing sprints. And uh, the reason why is summer camp. So summer camp hype, woo! I'm so excited guys, you have no idea. It's like 7.03 PM, I have not had dinner. I'm still so excited for summer camp, oh my goodness. Anyway, I don't wanna take up too much or any more of you guys' time. Thank you for the questions. Thank you for letting us know that you want us to do it again. In the meantime, please look forward to us doing writing sprints in June and July for summer camp prep and then summer camp. Uh, yes, <laughs> Kitoy Poi says, summer camp, that's what's addicted me to World Anvil. Honestly, it's how they got me too, man. I feel you. But anyway, so I ask you all to grab your hammer and go world build or go to sleep. <laughs> you guys have been here for so long, but go world build. Thank you all so much for being here. I love you all. Have an amazing rest of your day and night as you please. Bye guys. <laughs>